Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Budget Planning 101 with me, your host, Jada Brown. If you are new to the channel, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe, okay? Because every week I post a new video either about real estate or entrepreneurship and everything in between. I really want to thank everyone out there who has been a subscriber on the channel. Right now, we're on the journey to 200 subscribers, and I really appreciate all of the feedback that I've gotten from you guys, the likes, the comments, the shares, the subscribes. I really appreciate it, and please make sure that if you haven't subscribed, you do that now because we're going to continue to grow, both in numbers and also in knowledge, okay? So in this video, as I said before, today we are talking about how to create a budget, okay? A budget is very important because in order to get to where you want to go, as in your financial goals, you need to know where you're starting and also the journey in between. So a budget helps you to create that roadmap, right? And so, I got the technique that I'm going to share with you today from the budgetista herself, Tiffany Elish. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but she created a book that I highly recommend that you guys get, and I'm going to link it in the description box. Also, if you want a more, you know, um, extended review of the budgetista book, please let me know by commenting down below, and I will definitely make a video on it, okay? So again, in this video, we are talking about how to budget, so make sure you get ready and keep on watching because we're gonna get right into it. <laughs> so the very first thing that you want to do when creating your budget is to understand where you are currently, right? So what I suggest you do is to print out or download your most recent bank statement. And I would say do the previous month. So like today is October 13th, right? And if I was going to create a budget today, I would look at the prior month, September 1 through the end of September. And what you're going to do is categorize your spending, right? So if you went to, let's say, Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, Pizza Hut in one month, that category would be your eating out, right? Also look at how much you're spending on groceries, rent, mortgage, all of your bills, categorize it up, right? So let's just take, for example, let's just take your rent, okay? So your rent is a thousand. I wish, right? <laughs> okay, let's say eating out, you spent in the month of September, 200. Your gas for your car, you spent, let's say 300 for the month. Um, let's say your phone bill is bundled with your internet, I'll just say Wi-Fi. That was a hundred dollars. Um, let's think of another expense. You bought clothes, right? Let's say for the month that was one fifty. So you want to continue to categorize your spending of what you spent for the month, right? And I know it's probably going to be crazy. Like I know when I was doing mine, I was surprised at how much that I was spending on clothes and, you know, going to thrift stores. It's, it's probably going to be ridiculous, <laughs> but make sure that you're honest because you definitely don't want to fabricate those numbers and then your budget is off. So no matter how high the number is, you may be shocked. Make sure that you document it, okay? And the very next thing that you're going to do once you've categorized your spending for the month, which is just an estimate, of course, is you're going to further categorize them. So what I learned in Budgetista is that what each category is going to have a different meaning. So B is for bills, 
UB is for utility bills, and then C is for cash. So let me give you an example. Rent would be a bill because you have to pay that every month or you're going to be homeless. So you would put a B next to this, right? Eating out, that's gonna be a C. You'd have to eat, right? Everybody needs shelter, food, water. You have to eat. But do you need to eat Chick-fil-A every day? Do you need to eat at that new downtown spot that just opened? Like, do you have to have expensive food? Or can you buy groceries and cook your food, which has been known to be substantially cheaper? So eating out would be C for cash, okay? Your gas for your car. That would be UB, okay? Because you need the, it is a bill and you need the gas to get to work to make an income, but it is a utility bill because the price can fluctuate depending on how much gas you use. So you would put a UB, okay? Your phone and Wi-Fi, same thing. We need your, the phone, we probably, don't need the Wi-Fi because you can work at a local library, you can work at a local Starbucks or something like that, but it is nice to have and we will consider that to be a need. So we will make this a UB. Clothes would be a B. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I wish. It's actually a C, I would say, because most of us have enough clothes already and we don't need to buy new clothes every week or every day no matter how enticing it is to shop online, okay? So that's the scene. So what you're gonna do next, after you categorize all of these um, categories of spending, you're gonna calculate how many Bs you have, how much is your B category, how much is your UB category, and then how much your C category is, okay? So remember, bills, utility bills, cash. Okay, once you do that, you're gonna have that all tallied up. I did mine in my notebook and I used a calculator to do this, but I guess I'm old. You can do it on an Excel spreadsheet and have it calculated for you. Whatever means that lets you like see how much you're spending would be the best, okay? So what you're going to do after you do that is you're going to calculate how much income do I have, right? So let's say you have, and this is your net income. Let's say you have a job. From your job, you get $4,000 a month, okay? I'm gonna just write 4,000. Then you also have a side hustle. Let's say you uh, sell something on Etsy. So side hustle, SH, you make I don't know, $500 a month. You want to calculate whatever income that you receive. If you receive any type of government assistance, like um, Social Security or disability, or if you receive child support or, um, you know, income from investments, if you own some rental income, whatever it is, make sure that you calculate it because it's important to have a view book Okay, from the outside, knowing how much it is that you're receiving an in income and how much you're pushing out in the form of bills or, you know, like your cash payments that you're spending. And so once you do that, you're going to calculate how much you have from income and calculate how much you have from your expenses. Okay, all right. Okay, so just to recap, we're starting our budget, right? We have a outlook of what our net income is, and also how much we're currently putting out. Now, the next thing you need to do, which is my absolute favorite, is to visualize or set goals. Now, I have a video all about manifesting and visualization techniques that is on my channel currently. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and watch it. But the next thing you need to do is set a goal. Okay, now, remember, we are trying to create the journey of where we are currently to where we want to be in our financial journey, right? So 
when you're setting goals, don't think about, okay, well, where I am right now, I can't afford what it is that I want. Don't think like that. Think in realistic terms of, I am here now, I want to get here, how do I get there? But first you have to think about what you actually want because that will help you in our next step, which is making a plan, okay? So let's just say what your goal is. Maybe it is to build an emergency fund, right? That's definitely a great goal. Or you have a plan of going on vacation, okay? Or you might say, you know what, I want to buy a home. And if you want to buy a home in Maryland, D.C., Virginia, or Florida, make sure you call your favorite realtor, Jada Brown. Okay, because I'm going to help you save for that house. So if you want to buy a home, or maybe you want a car, whatever it is, it could be jewelry, whatever it is. Think about it, write it down, because when you write it down, it makes it absolute. And what you need to do next is decide how much this is going to cost, right? So if you want to buy a car and you need a down payment of, let's say, 20000 okay? Just being realistic. Or you want a car, you need a down payment of 6000 Whatever it is, you need jewelry, let's say you need 4000 I don't know, or your vacation is going to be um, 5000 or your emergency fund. Whatever the amount is, it does not matter. Just make sure that it is an accurate description or the price point is how much that goal will be. And don't look at those numbers and get intimidated. Remember, we're just in the planning process right now. But whatever your goal is, think of what you really want. Write it down, do some research, and determine how much you need, right, to buy a house, to buy a car, to go on vacation, because that's going to be really important in our next step, which is putting that plan together. So make sure that you stick with me, okay, because we're getting 50% done with this. Okay, guys, so we are getting to the nitty gritty of creating your budget. The next step, like I said before, is to create the plan, okay? We're going to create that budget. And there's a few different components that will bring this pie together, okay? The very first one is that you need to take a look at you, what you're spending. Remember in the first step, we categorized our spending. Take a look of your spending versus your income and make sure that you actually are not spending more than what you're bringing in, right? And if you are, then you need to take a look at reducing some